This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories. And welcome to the return of the series looking at if the Insomniac Spider-Man would survive the events of the Arkham games. This week we're looking at Arkham Asylum. And because there's not a, a whole lot to talk about for Arkham Asylum, I'll also be including a section looking at how they would change the events of Arkham Asylum since it's been so long. I'll be combining two of the videos into one since I think both will be relatively short videos. I do know that some other YouTuber did talk about this. I have not watched that video at all, and I already sort of thought this all through back when I made the posts back in, well actually far before because I made the posts back in like November, December, but I've kind of been wanting to do this for probably a year to a year and a half. It's just something I was always just too busy to do. So we'll start off with them not being able to change the events and take a look at the changes they can make since this is a pretty linear story. So let's go straight into it looking at if they can survive the events of Batman Arkham Asylum. Starting off I think they're going to have no problems at all throughout intensive treatment for the first time since it's really all combat encounters in a very basic stealth section. The only thing they really have to worry about at all is Zaz, but either Spider-Man can use their webs to pull the shotgun device away and easily save the guard. And taking down Zaz would be pretty simple after that. Or Miles could use his invisibility, or they could just do one of the single strike takedowns. Really whatever they choose to do, they should have no problem taking out Zaz, and when Harley drops the elevator on them, they'll be able to avoid that and very easily get up since they can climb walls, and they don't have to take the path that Batman did, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just say that they did, but it really won't change that much. Heading out, they will go and go to the location where the Batmobile was to go investigate where Gordon went, and unlike with Origins where there's a complicated crime scenes, they should be very easily able to pick up the tobacco that Gordon left behind since they're able to, in their games, find different trails of stuff like Devil's Breath and other items to track down where those came from. And they'll easily be able to follow that to know that Gordon is inside the medical facility. Again, they should have no real problems after they get in. The slightest problem they could have is saving Dr. Young. But I think that with their enhanced reflexes and enhanced strength, they should be able to save her and could use different spider gadgets or miles of visibility to take out the guards fast enough so they can save Dr. Young without her being killed. Continuing on, the next section that they may have to worry about is Scarecrow. And I think that they're going to have really no problems. We'll just say for simplicity's sake that Miles can't use his visibility when he's on fear gas since... This is all psychological, but they should have absolutely no problem avoiding Scarecrow's gaze and getting to the end where they can overpower him for the first time. And I'm just going to go straight out and say that I'm not going to really mention any of the other Scarecrow encounters since they could complete one and nothing else easily gets any harder. It's all basically the same gameplay and that's how it's going to work for all the boss fights. I'm only going to mention one type of boss fight once because if they could get it through it once, they could get through it again. So, moving on, they should really have no problem fighting Bane. He is going to be on Titan, but 
as I mentioned before, they could beat him on TN1, so they should have no problem when he's on Titan since his intelligence has dropped a lot from the TN1. And he's pretty similar to the Titan Thugs, so I won't be really mentioning them since I'd say that two Titan Thugs are probably about the equal of Bane. Maybe a little weaker, but they could easily defeat Bane if they either went solo or teamed up, so we can move on now to them investigating into Titan. I think that they could easily find out information about Dr. Young and that she created it, but I don't know if they're going to be able to get in deep enough to figure out that Dr. Young was being blackmailed by Joker. I don't think that Genki is skilled enough, and even if he is, I don't think he'd be breaking into Dr. Young's personal emails for the both Peter and Miles to be able to learn that she is being blackmailed by Joker. But since that really doesn't do anything to the plot, it really doesn't matter. Now, moving on to the Arkham Mansion. They should have absolutely no problems in there. They have to face Scarecrow, but as I said, they could beat him once, they could beat him again. And they should have no problems with any of the combat encounters. Making it to the end of the mansion. They should have no problem saving Dr. Young from Zaz since they did that before. With a different person, although he does have a knife to her throat. It won't matter too much since they could use their webs to pull it away. And after Dr. Young is killed, they should be able to go and track down Quincy Sharp using his DNA trail. Again, they could do that with the tobacco, and they did it with something like Devil's Breath, so they should have no problem tracking him down to the penitentiary. And in there, they're going to do a lot better than Batman did since they'd be able to know exactly when the lunatics are going to attack with Spidey Sense. And tracking down Harley's would be no problem. They should have no problem defeating her. Batman did it in a cutscene, and I don't think they're going to have to try too hard on her since she has no abilities. And they're just as, if not more agile than her. So, taking out Harley... They could go now and, using the codes, go to the Botanical Gardens, where they will have absolutely no problems the first time around. It's all just combat encounters, and I think they could easily solve the cage trap where, if they get spotted, the cages will drop people. They'll easily be able to make it to the control booth, take out the controller, and then take out the rest of the henchmen. And then there is the Titan fight, but since they were able to beat Bane, they should have no problem taking out Titan henchmen. Again, if they went solo or teamed up, doesn't really matter. So now we can move on to them going to Killer Croc's Lair, going through the intensive treatment building for the second time. They encounter Scarecrow again, but as I said, they could easily beat him, making it down to the sewers. They have to go through Crack's Lair. And they should have no problem with Spider Sense and using their webs and other gadgets to keep Crack away from them. And moving on, they can easily get the samples to create the Titan Antidote. After this, they can go back up, and we'll have no real problems taking care of Jokers in many of the different pump stations. And again, no problems with the Titan ambush when they're heading back up to the surface. After they get there, they'll have to go after Poison Ivy to cure her from her Titan infection and be able to take her down before they can go after Joker. And this is really the biggest problem they have of it. Poison Ivy is a difficult boss fight, really the only hard one in the game, and I think that they could beat her. Maybe a little difficult for them, 
but they have a better advantage where they could more easily dodge her attacks with spider sense. And although they don't have explosive gel, they could easily break through her shield and be able to take her out using their enhanced strength. Now moving on to the end of the game, we can take a look at how they would be able to go up against Joker. And heading after Joker, they should have no problem going against him in that boss fight, because all it really requires is for them to take out Henchman and pull him down, and then avoid a bunch. And yeah, honestly, I think that it's going to be pretty simple for them to do this. They should have absolutely no problem surviving through the events of Arkham Asylum. But uh, let's take a look at how they would change the events. And I think that the story is basically put on rails for them for a good amount of it. I think that there's really nothing they could do to change what's going on up until at least the medical facility. And there, I think they can make some changes. I think that one of them would go and take Dr. Young to the mansion, since she says it's so important to go there. And I think that they could pick up on this, and one of the two will go with her as the other goes to investigate into Titan. And after they do that, I think that things change a bunch. They'll be able to protect Dr. Young from Zaz. And I think more importantly, when they're at the mansion, they'll be able to go and help her destroy her notes. But not only that, they will be able to change some things where, using their spider sense and their enhanced reflexes, they'll be able to save Dr. Young from the exploding safe, and she'll be able to hold him directly where the lab is. And even if she can't give them access, they'll be able to use their super strength to break through. And since it seems that Joker was there for at least not a lot of time, they'll be able to go and take on Joker there. He may not even have the chance to put the Titan into the thugs. And I think that there's a fairly good chance that they could get him here, but I think that Joker could adapt enough to have the Titan thugs ready and part of this is the villains could adapt also. That's why I did not mention at the beginning Joker giving them the free shot like he did to Batman. I think he'd know that both Spider-Man would be able to catch him and bring him down safely without crossing any moral lines, so he wouldn't set that scenario up for them. So I think that he would be smart enough to send the Titan thugs after them and have them ready knowing they could get here faster. And once they come in, Joker would escape. And I think that they would go and immediately take down Poison Ivy. They do have Dr. Young there, and she could tell them about the antidote. And leaving Poison Ivy loose is just going to be more difficult for them. So they'd be able to take her down once she is not enhanced on Titan. So they'll easily be able to do that put her back in her cell, and then go to Killer Croc's lair. And through this, I think that they have a pretty simple way to go through this. I think that they really don't have to worry too much about Croc, since they could just crawl on the ceiling, which won't disturb any of the platforms. Croc won't even have to come out. And if he does... We can say that they can fight Croc, and I think they could beat him. They definitely were able to beat the Lizard, and I don't think that it's going to be too difficult for them. Croc does have an advantage with him being able to use the water, but I think they can steer him out to a patch of dry land and could defeat him in a boss fight like they did with Killer Croc, where Upper Peter does have the anti-venom suit, and Miles does have his venom, so... Either one should be able to do this with no problem. 
now continuing on with them having enough of the Venom Cure and Ivy not being infected, they can go straight for Joker. And when they go for him, if he does have Gordon captured, and if they are hit by the Titan injection, they'll be able to cure themselves and have a cure to use on Joker. And even if they didn't, and they had to fight Titan Joker in a straight-up fight, they should easily be able to do it. So yeah, although they don't really change too much, besides the fact that Dr. Young is alive, we also would not be able to save Scarecrow in time, I think, that when they're standing there, they try to talk him down, and Crack would just jump out and grab him. So Scarecrow will be left behind to help set up the events of Arkham Knight, and we can now move on to Arkham City, hopefully next week, but we'll see if I have the time for that. I want to know what you think, though. Do you think they'd survive, and do you think they'd be able to do things to change the events, or do you think it's basically going to go the exact same? Please let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next episode of Legends and Theories. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment, check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.